Hey guys, today we're taking a look at Manjaro, which is a great Arch-based operating system, which I haven't used on a desktop in a few years now. Looks very nice. It's got a great layout, great community, great forum. So if you want to try an Arch-based system and you're a little intimidated about trying Arch traditionally, you might like to try Manjaro. And I highly recommend this for anyone who's curious about Arch. I decided to install it on a drive I recently purchased after a hard drive failure uh, from rendering things, but uh, just wanted to show how it looks when you install it and tell you what I've done so far. Right now, I just got the XFCE desktop. It's a really great one. I'm actually running it on a ThinkPad right now, an older ThinkPad. So what I went with, of course, and what I recommend everyone goes with, is a minimal and so you have the choice from the full or the minimal. The minimal allows you to select only the things you need. And I always recommend to only install what you need because the more things you install, the more you open yourself up to potential vulnerabilities. I installed this minimal with full disk encryption. The installer is excellent and it'll walk you through the whole process. I went to download Tor Browser. You can also install Tor Browser in the Pac-Man command, the software manager here, which you can find all kinds of new software to look for. And I'm actually installing quite a few things right now. For Tor Browser, you might want to have a couple Tor Browsers in case you want to customize one. Now, first off, I want to mention that the Tor project doesn't recommend uh, changing your Tor Browser due to the fact that if you add certain changes, it could become an identifier. And so I'm not saying everyone should do this, but I did write a tutorial for open source intelligence people who may want to have one with an automatic redirect for privacy redirect. And I'm also going to be covering a fork of this coming up. Privacy redirect, if you aren't familiar with my earlier videos, it redirects you to the proxy front end of several important and great open source intelligence resources like Twitter and Google. So basically, you can actually use Tor Browser to browse YouTube. You can also browse Reddit as well. You can have Onion, Tor Hidden Service, Front Ends Forum. And so you can use that using this privacy redirect. It automatically will redirect you. And so here we see the diagram of proxy servers. Here is something like proxy chains. Check out my earlier tutorial on that. I also have a list of proxies for you if you're interested in something like that. But with a single proxy, you're connecting to the proxy and the proxy makes the connection to the internet. And that's essentially how these front ends work. They will connect to the server for you and you're connecting to the Tor hidden service. And if you want to check out my tutorial, go ahead to buy me a coffee dot com slash politictech slash posts and you can find it there just search tor browser and you'll see the tutorial on how to add it to tor browser leaving it for your open source intelligence browser that way you keep your work with open source intelligence separate from other tor browsing and that's up to you but that's just what i'm suggesting and it's pretty easy to add into Tor Browser if you do do that. So always make sure to check out the blog, because if you don't check out the blog, you're going to miss several written tutorials with screenshots and some of the things with recording. Uh, you want to make sure you're subscribed to my other channel on PeerTube, which is where I've been uploading since I've been running on tail since the uh, disk crash. I also have a BitChute channel where I've also been uploading some of the recent content as well. So if you're watching on YouTube, you're not going to catch some of this stuff. Go ahead and follow on BitChute and PeerTube. Now, unfortunately, Odyssey also blocks logins from Tor Browser, and I think it's a bit of a shame, and I hope they do change and reconsider this so they don't block out uh, too many users. It could really help open up their user base if they allowed Tor Browser logins. And after we've downloaded Manjaro, of course, you're gonna wanna make sure you check out the checksum. And afterwards, of course, once you download Tor Browser, you're going to want to make sure you verify its signature. And first, you'll want to use this command to fetch the developer's key for Tor. And after that, you're going to run this command here to export to a new file called tor.keyring. And afterwards, you'll simply run this command if you're on Linux, gpgv, and then the following command, this being signature, this being the actual Tor browser download, which helpful to have in the same folder and then you don't have to write 
the entire directory location. Afterwards, you'll see the response that the signature is good, as it shows right here in the example. Of course, I had to get my SSH keys because all my servers require key authentication. There's no password access for SSH. I needed the SSH key in order to log into different servers that I manage. I put in my Tails disk after booting up Manjaro. I checked my disk, which is right here, and it's called Tails because I used crypt setup. And I'm going to go through the process real quick just to show you how you would use command line to unlock a Lux volume. Anytime you're going to unmount a volume, a drive, you need to leave the location. Otherwise, it'll say it is currently in use. And then what you can do is you can either U-mount the device or you can U-mount the actual mount location as well. And so at this point, I've actually unmounted it, but as you can see, it's still unlocked here. And so what I'll do here in order to kind of do the process backwards is crypt setup lux close slash dev slash mapper slash tails. And now what's happened is I've actually closed that encrypted volume. And so we're going to start at the beginning now. And what I'm going to do is show you how you would go into your encrypted volume in case you need to retrieve important information or personal files from your home directory to transfer over to a new disk. And so what we'll do first is we'll unlock the volume because you won't be able to mount it. See, I'll show you real fast. Mount slash dev slash stv2 and then try to mount it and you'll see it does not recognize crypto lux. And so what you'll actually need to do is crypt setup lux open and then slash dev slash sdv2 and then you're going to call it something and I like to call it tail so I know and recognize what it is when I list those devices and so that's what I do I call it tails and let's fix the typo and at this point I have to enter a password to unlock it now that I've entered the correct password and the volume is unlocked, I can then mount that volume and where it's going to be stored after you use crypt setup to unlock it is slash dv slash mapper. And so you'll see the different volumes here and we'll end up mounting it by using mount slash dv slash mapper slash tails and then the location we want it to be. What we'll see is the df command will show it's mounted on slash mnt slash usb now if you don't have that location you can actually create the directory slash mnt slash sd card for future encrypted sd cards i may want to mount we have full access to my tails and we'll go over into the usb location where it's mounted as you can see here slash dev slash mapper slash tails is mounted over in slash mnt slash usb and so now we are in slash mnt slash usb we can see my files here we can see some of my directories as well and what i would do next and what i've already done is go into the open ssh client at this point we can then list these keys and what i can do now is i can copy everything in this directory to my slash home slash user slash dot ssh and if it doesn't exist yet make sure to create the dot ssh directory so you would just simply do mkdir and then do slash home slash user slash dot ssh and at that point you'll be able to use your key authentication as you would have on your other disk and so that's one way you can migrate some of your stuff over you can also look and get some of your your keys for GPG and other things as well from your Tails disk if that's what you were working with. The very first thing I did though of course was installed YPry because I always install YPry first and that just ensures that something is watching my current MAC address to ensure that it's not going to leak to one of the routers or local area uh, war drivers and it can see that at this point it had to correct the MAC address several times during these time periods here and so that's a big reason I use it and a big reason I wrote that function for the MAC checking to ensure that there were no MAC address leaks in the past in my own experience there was a bug at one point in Network Manager that broke the randomization 
I ended up realizing that MAC addresses were leaking just because of a bug. And so that's another reason I wrote YPRI. And then I went into here to look up different things I needed, such as uh, some of the video making stuff I use, like KDE and Live, which is what I'm using right now. And Simple Screen Recorder is what I'm using to actually record this screen recording video. And of course, I didn't forget everyone who's followed me on Pop! OS. I'm going to continue uh, revealing different ways you can utilize some of the things I set up on Manjaro and do the same on Debian-based distributions like Pop! OS, which is actually Ubuntu-based. But one of the great things about this minimal XFCE is it's so lightweight. And so... I actually am running around 600 megabytes of RAM when I actually boot up. So the memory usage, not much. I can simply add just what I need with less things that I don't need that I don't have to trust. And so that's where I'm at right now. So I'm finally getting things back together. So I'll be able to upload again to YouTube coming up. I wanted to point out the blog, of course, if you're not familiar with it, you can follow it for free. There are some posts I put out to thank members and supporters. Now I always put those out as a thank you, and I'll be putting out special tutorials. If you're interested in all that, and you want to see the latest videos without having to chase down the channel, I'll always post the video on the blog, no matter where it's hosted. That way, if you follow the blog, you'll always see the latest video as it comes out happy with this operating system. It's a great one. As I mentioned, it's great for beginners to start with. You also may like LibreWolf. That's another thing you can install. That's something I actually just installed. Let me run through how I did that as well. Manjaro, as it's an Arch-based system, you can access the AUR, the Arch User Repository, and you can use a command called yay to access that easily. Now, of course, you, you may not have yay when you first install it, which I didn't. You can simply search for it. And at this point, you can install it with Pac-Man. Pac-Man, then do capital S, and then yay. Of course, none of this applies to Debian or Pop! OS, but Debian and Pop! OS and other distros like that, they don't have access to the Arch user repository, which is an amazing amount of software that is easy to access and compile without much work. It can be really a quick way to speed up your setup if you have a lot of work to do getting your system set up. If you have a lot of things you want to customize, having access to the AUR is a really helpful thing. I do suggest installing the yay command that'll help you access it easily. Once you have the yay command, you can use it similarly to the pacman command. And then you can search for liverwolf. You can decide do you want to compile it or do you want to actually download the binaries, which is here. So if you want to compile it, you would do yay capital S and then just liverwolf. And from there, it'll download and compile everything for you. And for the binary for a faster setup on liverwolf you would then do the liverwolf bin in the same in place of just liverwolf and at that point i have it up right now it's actually what i'm running right here if you do go with the minimal you'll notice certain things you may need to install all right with me because i don't want to install things i don't need i don't want to install you know non-open firmware that i don't need things like that follow me on peertube follow me on fostodon follow me on twitter Follow me on BitChute, and of course, follow me on the blog. And the blog will have several resources. I also put other links to things that you can access and ways to support. If you're interested in supporting, I have a list of ways you could do that. And of course, I always appreciate anyone who supports. Everything counts. You know, sharing the videos is a great way to support as well. And of course, there are servers you can access as well. Tor Hidden Service Pastebin with encrypted messages you're able to send out where the host can't actually read them. It uses zero knowledge, 256-bit AES encryption. I've gone over this in previous videos and also the Gitya Onion. It's all listed on the blog. So make sure to follow, share, and subscribe and like this. And I will be back later with more on how to protect your privacy Linux and open source.